Welcome back to Real Coffee Talk. I'm Debbie. I'm Tina. And we have some more cool things for you. One of the things that we heard was people really wanted to know about the laws that were still on the books. And so we did some extra research since there were several requests for that. And one of them was <laughs> the hats. Did you know it's still a law that a lady cannot buy a hat without her husband present and his permission in the state of Kentucky. Yeah. In the state of <laughs> Kentucky, you also are required to take a bath once a year. <laughs> and I think the law was actually called, Thou shalt not stink. Yes. So if you live in Kentucky, it is required by law that you take a bath once a year. Yes. So that you don't stink. And you can't wear, if you're a female, you cannot wear those beautiful hats for Derby without your husband approval as well <laughs> as his permission. Right. So anyway, and then in Indiana, there's also some unusual laws. And um, that is what? Cannot spit on the sidewalk in Terre Haute or you will be charged a fine. It's very important that you do not spit. <laughs> Don't spit on the I'm sidewalk sorry, guys. in Terre Haute. <laughs> some of these are a little bit funny. I can just imagine. Hey, honey, I need to go buy a hat today. <laughs> no, I'm that sorry. That doesn't happen here. <laughs> Sorry, honey, we don't get to do that today. You don't have my permission. Okay. <laughs> right. In right. Kentucky, that was Kentucky. Indiana, in Terre Haute, and you don't spit. And then, of course, forging a check in Indiana. Are you guys listening? It's a hundred flogs. It says it in the books. Now that, now that's <laughs> still on the books. So if, if you're. Uh, don't, don't do that. Don't uh, do that. I don't, <laughs> don't forge checks anyways, but right. definitely don't expect the flogs. I'm still thinking, oh my goodness. Right. Maybe uh, if we had that infected, it would never happen again. Well, maybe, maybe not. But I would, I, I just would, that was funny. I just think that's hilarious and you shall not stink. So then we went for our national. By the way, happy 2018. Mm -hmm. Yes. Finally, we're so happy that it's here. We hope that not very many of you are suffering from... Uh, the national hangover day oh well January I hope not. one I hope not I hope that you're ready to go and set goals oh that was pretty good ready to right. goal ready to goal set but January 13th for your national days this month is make your dreams come true and I love that day yes there were some cute other days we'll talk about right. those but make your dreams come true on January 13th and is the national day and that's a really cool one to think about because if you're going to make your dreams come true, you got to have goals. Right. You've got to have, you know, um, New Year's resolutions, however you want to call it, goals or New, right. New Year's resolution, which I'm all for making small goals. You know, don't. Right. If you need to start running, don't run three miles the first day. You know, and that's what we were talking about is how do you set goals that you're going to accomplish and that on January 13th, reasonable, you're ready to go into 2018 and truly celebrate the national holiday of right. make your dreams come true. And so I gathered some information. Some of it was from Zig Ziglar, Jack Canfield, <laughs> Brian Tracy. I could, if I named them all, you guys would get bored. But uh, I did look at them and it was interesting because when I was a little girl, one of our favorite traditions uh, came along and it was New Year's the week of or whatever and right. we would create vision boards yes and then I until talk that to you know taught that to my children and we would make vision boards we would get magazines and create these boards and they are fine too they're wonderful in fact if you guys are ever interested we can create some vision boards on the real coffee talk we might do that and it just would be the, just a great activity to see kind of what is a vision board but when you're making New Year's resolutions Everybody had one common strand, and that was take baby steps. steps. Yes. Don't become overwhelmed with this process. <laughs> I know I would write, you know, New Year's resolutions 20 years ago were 25 or 30. I'm going to lose this, or I'm going to gain this, or I'm going to work <laughs> right. on this. And now they, you know, they really suggest finding sections, a financial goal. This year, I'm going to double my income. I'm going to search for uh, opportunities to become at a different financial status. Right. And then once you've hit that, it's time for me to make another goal. Yes. 
And, no. you know, you don't have to double your income. Right. Like she's going to do. She's going to be busy. <laughs> but but it, it, it is. It's a financial. Right. It goes into a section, and it kind of helps reprogram your brain right. to what am I working on. And I thought this right. was very interesting. And you probably have studied this. Our brain truly, the, you know, the now thing is multitasking. Yes. Everybody should multi. In actuality, our brain does not work that way. No, it doesn't. Not at all. It doesn't heal that way, nor does it, it does not work. You really can only focus on one thing at a time. Right. And that's why they discuss those goal settings as sections. If it's a, if it's a become more fit, or if it's a health goal. Right. Set that one health goal and reach it and then set another goal. Right. Rather than reading all of those and then feeling less than and it making it a resolution oh, and, yeah. you know, going to, Feel beat up on yourself, and that's you know one of my goals this you year. You know, if you if you never go to the gym and you think you need to exercise and work out more, then that's great. Then subscribe to the gym and start going once a week, and right. then once you go once a week for a month or two, you're like, okay, now I'm in a routine. Okay, add a day. Right. And then go for two or three months, and then add another day. But don't say I'm going to the gym every day. Exactly. The first exactly. of the year, because you're not going to make it. Right. Your, your life is going to interfere until you recreate your life. And it hasn't become a habit. Right. As to, and I know that one of my goals this year is to become consciously effort and, and positive about myself. You right. know, as far as, you know, quit looking at all the little things. I mean, yeah, I may not look like I was when I was 21. Obviously, I don't. But it's okay. Right. I love and accept myself the way I am now. And, and, and working on that because I catch myself even doing these coffee talks. <laughs> you know, when we do the real coffee talk, we'll watch and we'll review over and see if we need to do something else. And I always look at Debbie and say, oh, maybe I look too fat or maybe I'll do this or maybe. And I am consciously planning on setting that yeah. goal of yeah. when I look at myself, I love me right now. Right. And then I would like to improve some things. <laughs> Which moves into... She's fine, but she doesn't know that. <laughs> oh, well, let me tell you all a story. I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. For all you viewers out there, you can get a laugh at my expense. I uh, had a Christmas party last year, and my husband said, you know, let's go, and I did <gasps> not get to go. Now, wait. This, we have to back up a little bit. This, the last show, she talked about the Spanx and the party. Exactly. This is the story about the Spanx and the party. <laughs> It's hilarious. It is. So to give you a little background, my very favorite thing to do is dance. I love to dance. I love it. And when I shattered my leg last year, I missed the Christmas party. So oh, I was yeah. devastated. I mean, I was even telling the doctor the day after surgery, I will make that party next Saturday, right? And he said, uh, no. So I did make the party this year. Here's the funny part. Before, while I was dress shopping, I thought, well, it would be nice. I always had, when I was teaching beauty pageants and, right. and, and beauty pageant winners, I would say, you should always have a spank on. And that's your girdle or maybe form-fitting, just to kind of make everything very nice and proportioned. So I did buy one. They're expensive, too, by the way. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> did you know that? They're safer. Yeah. They're expensive. If you guys find them I'm cheaper, sorry. let <laughs> me know. But this was expensive for this activity. Yeah, it was. My husband comes home and I put on this beautiful black dress and I'm, I'm super proud. I'm walking through the house and he looks at me for a minute and I said, do you like my new dress? And he said, Daddy, your dress is beautiful. And then she turns around. And then I did my spin and thought that I would be so cute. And he said, stop, stop. And I said, what is your problem? <laughs> he said, do the turn and then stop. I said, okay. So I just thought he was being cute. He walks up and he goes, what is that? Okay, guys, listen. A spank holds everything in. But there is a lesson to be learned here, okay? You need to check your sizes. You're Sometimes not a medium. It spills over. If you're not a medium, you're probably not a medium in a spank. <laughs> I had pulled this nice on. And in the back, I'm going to turn and show you just a little bit. I had developed some nice little extra pockets. It was, it was, it was flowing out of the Spanx. The Spank had pushed everything up to the top, so my front and back looked very <laughs> similar. That's the best way I can tell you. That's, that's if you a are light way not <laughs> laughing right now, I am going to tell you, laugh. Now, the funny thing is, 
if she had not shown him this new dress and spun around, she would have gone to the party looking this way. And my first experience with Spanx would have been even more terrifying <laughs> and horrific. So you don't wear Spanx anymore, do you? I, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I'm going to say I bought a larger size, ladies, if you need to buy them. I wonder why men don't wear Never mind. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, she's not. Here's the deal. <laughs> Your Spanx, just try them on before you buy them. Yeah. And look all around. And they should be your size. You know, don't try right. to. Yeah, nobody's, you know, I think it's great that we're not all the same exact size. Right. Because then you wouldn't know who anybody was. You'd be like, oh, are you Jane? Are you John? Are you right. Mary? Or, yeah. Know, but, yeah, you we all do, need to look different. Right. And you do, they do serve a purpose. Do not think, you know, don't go out there and say, well, you know, Tina said this fakes are horrible. They're not. They do serve a purpose. It, it was just my right first size. experience with them, and I will just not say I will not wear them anymore, but I will say I will be very cautious and try on the whole outfit before I go any further. And by the appropriate size. And I know that you guys love endings. You know, you like for us to wrap it up, so I'm just going to wrap it up for you. Had a wonderful evening. We danced she from uh, probably four or five hours. Honestly, we wrapped up the party and had a fabulous time with all of our friends back in Kansas. And I just wanted you to know that. So hopefully you got a little laugh, but it did turn out wonderful. I just took the spanks off and just let it all go. <laughs> <laughs> And she still looked good. So. Yeah, it looked great. It was fine. It was fabulous. I just thought I might make it a little better. But yeah, I just thought that was fun. I wanted you to enjoy that. For all of you that are sitting at home and watching and laughing, and we just hope that you get a laugh out of that. And of course, our funny, our funny laws. Oh, my. What other days do we have coming up at the end of January? Because we covered last time. We covered the beginning of January. We've already got January 13th. Make your dreams come true. Set your goals. You're make right. them small. Once you hit them, move forward. Right. Don't worry. But don't overwhelm yourself, guys. Well, I don't know why there's a cuddle day and then a hugging day. There is. To me, they're the same thing. But I have a feeling some people will separate them, and I don't know why. But Well, you know. I don't know if you know this, but this is true. This is a health quality of a hug. It, it does. It, it changes your whole outlook, and it actually changes your... Um, Emotions, if you get hugs or if you give hugs. Exactly. It, it really does. They so said that average, on average, everybody should have four hugs a day. That's just to maintain a normal, right. human, healthy lifestyle. Right. Anybody that gets more than four hugs a day, it just keeps accelerating the health benefits. It's yeah. from six and then goes up to eight, and it's, it's amazing. They've actually done studies on this and how just that embrace and that feeling and that touch... And I'm sure you guys know this, but we're not all keeping that human touch anymore. Right. I mean, if you go into a restaurant and you're sitting with your family and your loved ones, and you'll notice three or four people, if there's six or seven people there, there's three or four people on their phones. And I, yeah. uh, so give them a hug. <laughs> if you're going to look at your phone, I'm, we're asking, not just National Hug Day on January 21st, but <coughs> every time you see somebody, you just look at them and say, I'm going to give you a hug, I need a hug. It doesn't mean necessarily just for them, but, right. you, know, you know, I think my grandmother was always the best hugger. Oh, she just, yeah. she would hold on, you know, even when she was very young, you know, she would just hold on and she would enjoy, she would always say, I'm getting my hugs and my love in. Oh, you know? neat. I had a, had a meeting this morning, a, a brunch meeting, and it was really neat. And the person that I met, as soon as I came through the door, I got a hug. It's like, oh, I'm so glad to see you, you know. And then uh, after we got finished, I got a hug. And then when we got out to the car and parking lot and we were leaving, I got another hug. And then so it sat your whole day. Oh, yeah. It of did. course, every time I see most people, I'm always saying, yeah. i got to give you a hug. So, you know, <laughs> well, enjoy National Hug Day. I think right. that's a fun day. Of course, we're going to go on National Pie Day is oh, Debbie's day. And man. that's January 23rd. She actually said she'd make me a pie. So we'll try hey. to see if we can get her to record and we'll eat it and taste Listen, it. We, I figured out something. It took me weeks. We were trying to teach um, my nieces how to cook. And... They don't like to cook on the stove because it takes too long. And this was years ago. So I had to figure out how to make things in the microwave. Well, there's no recipe for a old-fashioned pie in the microwave. I didn't think about that. I've oh, never... there's not. Uh, there's not one. So I had to take an old-fashioned recipe and then figure out how to do it in the microwave. And the strange thing was it took four pies. Of course, I really ruined one of them really bad. You, you couldn't even... <laughs> 
They no, wasn't good at all. <laughs> and then each one got a little better because I figured out the timing in the microwave and all that. So now I can make a homemade pie that you would normally stir on the stove for, what, is it 30 minutes or so? A long time. But anyway, now I can do a pie in seven minutes in the microwave. This is old-fashioned pie. You need to bring that in. I know. We need to share that. Keep on Debbie. We're going to make sure you're posting how much you love us. <laughs> and you're also sending us cards. She's going to give you the address again. Um, all of January or all of 2018. Right. And if you want to see Debbie make us a pie in seven minutes, I think we could do that here. Oh, it's really cool. And it's it, good. It, it, oh, my. It's an old fashioned pie recipe. Is it? You know, with the milk and the cornstarch or mm -hmm. flowers you're going to use, and then the cocoa and the sugar mm -hmm. and the butter. It's an old-fashioned stovetop pie made in the, in the microwave. microwave. Wow. And it I think we need to add that on our agenda. I think so, too. I really Not do. only the fudge, but the pie. <laughs> She's going to teach me to make fudge. I'm so excited. I want to tell you about a recipe I used over the holidays. You yeah. just brought that up, and I thought, I need to share this. I got it in Sprouts. It's a natural grocery store in Kansas. It's actually out west, and I think they're moving. So I know that they have come into Atlanta, Georgia, and maybe you love Nashville. To go. Yeah. <laughs> and but she had a pie crust, just like you were talking, but it was already made pie crust, and took brie, the cheese brie. Right. Now this is very simple, because I'm cooking it. <laughs> I am a pretty good cook, but it's very simple. Simple. And you wrap that pie crust around the brie and bake it, just like you were baking a cheese pie. Right. And then you cut it when you when it's crisp or when it's done. Then when you cut it, it's like a, ch a brie cheese and that pie crust, and then you just put a little bit of spread on it. Now, she put fig spread. Have you ever had fig spread? Yes. I had never had fig spread. It was amazing. I bought two different jars of it. Uh, it doesn't go with my New Year's resolutions yet, but that's okay. This was for Christmas. I did this. so, And you just cut it and then ate it like a little cheese pie with the fig spread on it. So like an order. It was very good. Oh, and nice. it was under $10, the entire, you know, and it fed quite a few people. I mean, it was an order. So then you take the, you take the pie crust and you lay it down flat? You lay it on roll flat. It, you, well, you can roll it, but you wrap the brie. So mine was around. Hers was actually right. the wedge of brie. So what she did was took two wedges and put them together to make a rectangle, laid it on the pie crust, then wrapped the pie crust around it. I see. Now mine was um, circular. Right. So I put it just in that circular pie crust and then pulled it up like a little uh, gift and then cut the top of it off. Okay, there we have to make that one now. Right. Okay. It was very good, so. and everybody loved it. So just something to add in there. Wow. If you want to try, it was a nice little, you know, my husband and I eat it just for supper sometimes. So. Right. It was really good. Well, now we have several things. Woo! I'm getting hungry. Well, one of my so. favorite days, just to <laughs> add to her pie day, is measure your feet day. Oh, this is so neat. And we think it's funny in a way, but in another way, it's really neat to find out how you change over the years. So if if you measure your feet like when you're 16 and then when you're say 18 and then 20 and then 25, you're going to find that your feet either shrink or they get wider or they get smaller. My feet got smaller. Now some people's feet get wider, some people's feet get bigger, but it's just kind of, I don't know, I just think it's neat to see how things change over the years. Right. So What is it? Is it when you're born with your eyes, they are, do they Day that away is no, that correct? No, your eyes. Uh, if your eyes are blue, um, as long as they stay blue up to I think it's eight weeks or or might be three months or something, they they'll stay blue. Oh, okay. But if your eyes are blue when you're born, sometimes they will change and be brown or green or whatever. But it's really neat. We had with our kids. Amanda was premature, so she had blue eyes six months, and we were like, oh, she's gonna have blue eyes. That's cool. It's great. And we even factored in the fact the the dates that she was premature, and she surpassed that. So when you add the time she was born, right, and give her three months, and then add more to it because of the preemie, well, she was way past it. 
Well, wow. no. By the time she was a year old, those eyes turned dark brown. <laughs> they were, yeah, they're, they're like old blue eyes. That's but okay. But yeah, that's, it's just kind of They're probably beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're beautiful. Eyes, so. That's neat. That's yeah. fabulous. But it's just, to me, it's kind of neat to see how you change. And you shrink right. as you get older. That and is you, neat. I know shorter. we have measured before <laughs> as far as, but not my feet. So I will t let you guys know if my feet have gone down or have grown. I know that this is the first pair of shoes as far as boots that I've had on since my accident, yes. which is a year and a month ago or yeah. something. And there's even a little mm -hmm. heel on them. And yeah, she does not heel. wear a heel. Right. So. I have always worn heels and Kevin, since this year. Yeah. Not since not, the accident. Not last year, you know, 2017. So it's pretty neat. We've had a lot of fun today. We hope that we get to bring you interesting, funny, you know, if it's at my expense for you to laugh, that's fine. If it's at Debbie's expense, we just want you to laugh. We want you to have a great time. Set those goals, but don't make it overwhelming. Oh, Life no. is supposed to be having fun, and you're to live and enjoy. Enjoy the people around you. We know January can get kind of long. Oh, it can. And if you want to run three miles next year, Set your goal for this that year. This year, this year. Oh, we don't want right. them setting those yeah, goals. 2018. <laughs> She's not moved over yet, but we're <laughs> close. We're already moved over. In the year of 2018, if you want to be able to run three miles, then say, okay, in August, I'm going to be running three miles, right. and then start walking in January, right. and then build up to it. But but don't say you're going to run three miles by the end of January. I don't want to hear about you. <laughs> Never mind. Don't just don't do it. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> no. It's not worth it. If, I promise, yeah. it's not. <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> yeah, Build start, up to things. Start so. building those goals, but set them. Because guess what? You cannot accomplish a goal. That's right. If you do not set it, I do mm -hmm. not have. This is not a lie. I have gone over all of my, even the long list of twenty-five and thirty New Year's resolutions, and almost. All of them I have either accomplished or I had scratched them off and was like, I don't really want that anymore. Right. Because you are allowed to change your mind. Yes. You may not like the same things that you uh, liked last year right. or 10 years or five years ago. So you're allowed to change your mind. Uh, yeah, I think people get in that little mindset that if you set a goal, you have to do that goal. Right. You don't have to do that goal. I mean, try it if you don't like it. Change it. Make a different yeah. goal. Make sure you're you know. enjoying what you do. Yeah. Enjoy what you do and do what you enjoy, right? right? And it doesn't mean you failed. Don't ever think that. No. No. Life Louise changes. Hayes. I read this book. Louise Hayes, and she has uh, passed on this year. Mm -hmm. She's a great author, but she even talks about how she did not ever walk off a stage. I think this is magnificent. Never walked off a stage that she did not say, wow. I did terrific. Uh, yeah. How many times, I mean, truly, I'm going to be honest with you guys, that's not what I've done in the past. I've always walked off and said, I could have done this, or I should have done that, or maybe I should have said this, or, you know, and I am consciously, that is on the top of my goal list, is to love what I do, and when I walk off, find all the good things. Because there right. are good things. There really are. Now, see, I... I do similar to that. I usually finish, like when we do this, I'll, I'll think, oh, we did a great job. That was wonderful. We covered everything we wanted to. We talked about things. We made sure they had an address and an email or whatever. But, you know, we could, we, next time let's do this and this on top of that. Right. Yeah. So it's not that I find things, things. we don't want. Yeah. You do. You tweak things. Yes. But you don't criticize. I agree. I yeah. have that tendency to walk off and be like, a, oh, I should have, you know, but that Louise Hayes comment, and I mean, I've been doing it for about a week now. It's on my blog. I love and accept myself. I love and accept myself. Yeah. It's actually been um, seven weeks that I've been working yes. on it. It is not simple. No, it's not. There are times that I think, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, but anyways. <laughs> The truth of the matter is, you sh you need to love and accept yourself. You yes. Know, that golden rule, and I keep saying it over and over, is, you know, love, what is it, love thy neighbor as thyself. Right. If you don't love you, how do you love that neighbor? Well, that's true. And then, I think if you turn around and look at it a little different way, if you decide that you like who you are, because everybody has a different ability, and right. you need to like your talents, you need to re recognize what your talents are, and Everybody's talents are not the same. No, thank goodness. Well, yeah. So mm -hmm. you recognize your talents and you'd be glad you have those. Right. Because in real life, you can't know how to fix a car. You can't know how to do heart surgery. You can't know how to do brain surgery. You can't know how to do physics and math and uh, all in the same person. Well, right. there are a few out there, but not very many. 
But there, there is no one that can do every single thing in this world and know all about it. So if your car breaks down, you're going to call a mechanic. If your heart acts up, you're going to go to the heart doctor. Mm -hmm. What is your talent? What are you able to do? You know, even if it's just making a quilt or if it's just talking to people when they're upset or it doesn't have to be some massive talent. Making that a quilt is massive, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> okay, she always everybody. says things like that, and I always look at her and go, mm, I, that is massive to me. <laughs> that's very... Uh, that's my downtime. Creati that's, creative. <laughs> that's my downtime is making a quilt. So, But <laughs> she's going, not me. <laughs> so or riding the motorcycle or whatever right. else could be that downtime. Right, but that's that's different talents. So you have to... Be excited that you have this talent and realize that in real life, right. you're going to call the plumber and you're going to call the electrician. So what's your talent? What are right. people going to call you for? What are they going to ask you to do? What are they going to have you help them do? And be excited. Hey, I've got, I can give back. I can be productive. Right. And that is what we want to do. Yeah. We really want to give back to you. We want you to be inspired. We want you to laugh. We want you to cry <laughs> with us a little bit. You know, last month we discussed all about the adoption and the foster yeah. parents. We hope that you have not forgotten to give to those people in need. Yes. Send a little card. Send a little love. Maybe make sure that you have a hug on the 21st or, or go back to the 6th and cuddle with somebody. Right. But we want you to be inspired and we want you to be happy. Yes, by all means. Be happy. I think that would be the biggest one. And we'll have again, we'll have up on the end of the show, we'll have uh, links for you to go to and be able to find the nonprofits here in town and in the region, and then you can donate to those nonprofits. Right. And, uh, and if you find something even needing, the, the needs, I know there was, I, uh, what was that? Lori Bame came and recorded with us, yes. and she has a hospital give. They give gifts. I can't think of what it's called. Caitlin's it's Hope. Hope. Caitlin's Hope. Oh, thank yes. goodness. Lori, I'm sorry. I couldn't remember the name at that moment, but Caitlin's Hope, and it, and it is a great... Yes, and there's also Becca's Toppers that does Becca's similar Toppers. to Caitlin's Hope. Becca's Toppers is um, about a young girl that was 16 or 18, and she died of cancer and refused gifts for herself. She wanted them to make gifts for the kids around her because they didn't have wigs, they didn't have hats or scarves, and it was very traumatic for the kids. And so after she passed away, they continued that. Oh, neat. And so um, actually, now I don't normally talk about uh, companies or entities because they don't advertise with us, but Elk Creek in Owenton actually hosts a, um, a skeet shoot every year that benefits Becca's Toppers. So if you see that coming up, Mm -hmm. You might want to be a part of that too. Right. So, you know, and if you want to get a hold of uh, Caitlin's Hope, we yes. have some information, and you can look that up. I know that they are growing all yes. the time, and I'm super proud because and those two take care of kids. Right. Uh, yes, Caitlin's That's Hope does when, and I know that Caitlin had passed away yes. from an undetermined illness. Illness, and her parents and her brother have come together, and what they give is they give bags of goodies for yes. people when they get into the hospital. They recognize that need. Right. And it was it was great. I got to actually interview her last year, and I right. walking on my little walker, and she said, "Oh my goodness!" I said, "Honey, this is fabulous." So I I loved writing about that, and I do follow her, and and also the toppers. Yes. Anything. Just don't forget. I know it's January. I know that there's like the little crunch. Now we got to pay all our other bills because we bought Christmas or well, yeah. or Hanukkah gifts or whatever. Right. But however. You know, don't forget that you are blessed. We want you to be grateful for those blessings. Yes. And, you know. And give back. Just a little. That's all it yeah. takes. Just takes a little bit of love to go a long way. Yep. So, as always, we are super appreciative that you watch us and that you enjoy. Make sure if you're watching us on Facebook, you post all your little comments. We'll read them and we might respond. And if we don't respond, just know that we do appreciate you. If you're watching us on channel 15 and 25, thanks and send us a little card if you want to. The address is? The address is 402 West Main Street, Madison, Indiana. So by all means, send those to us, and we'll, we'll love to. But the see real them. coffee talk, we would love to. We, we we might even feature if you send us a great card, we'll feature you I, on here. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind doing that. I either. don't either. No, no, not at all. Thank That'd you. God bless. It's 2018. Woo! Make those goals, guys. Yeah. And as always, we thank you for watching. <laughs>